Don't you know we come this far? Oh, yes, we have. Don't you know we're trusting? Because my God has never Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome to the History of Christianity podcast. My name is Daniel White, the third president of Gospel Light Society International. When I became a believer in Jesus Christ, I somehow had the false idea that Christianity began when I got saved. I had no concept of the hundreds of years of history that Christianity had gone through since the time of the Lord Jesus Christ some 2,000 years ago. I have found that many believers, young and old, have the same false idea. The purpose of this uh, podcast is to dispel this notion by sharing with listeners the history of Christianity from the ministry of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ all the way up until the present day in an easy to understand way or format. You don't have to worry, this is not a lecture. This is a look at the basic facts and figures of Christian history that I believe every believer needs to be aware of. Our scripture verse today is Romans 1.16 which reads, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Our quote today is from Paul House. He said, The early church was most useful when it preached the meaning of Christ through the lens of the whole of Scripture. It was most powerful when it maintained integrity with God and other human beings. It was most evangelistic when it understood that adherents of other religions, whether Jewish or Greek or Roman, faced eternal judgment without Christ. Today, beloved, we are discussing Mission to the Gentiles. Part 1 from Justo L. Gonzalez's fine book, The Story of Christianity, Volume 1. Those Christians whom Acts calls Hellenists, while Jewish, showed a degree of openness to Hellenistic culture, since they were the first to be persecuted in Jerusalem. They were the first to be scattered throughout the neighboring towns, and thus they were also the first to take the Christian message uh, to those areas. Let's look at the scope of the mission. According to the book of Acts 8, 1, chapter 8, verse 1, these Christians were all scattered throughout Judea and Samaria, Acts 9, 32-42 speaks of visits by Peter to the Christian communities in Lydda, Sharon, and Joppa, all in Judea. Acts 8 tells of the work of Philip in Samaria, the conversion of Simon Magus, and the visit of Peter and John. As early as Acts chapter 9, We are also told that some of the fleeing Christians were scattered as far as Damascus, well beyond the borders of Judea. And Acts 11.19 adds further that those who were scattered because of the persecution that arose over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia and Cyprus and Antioch. This does not mean that the mission was extended to the Gentiles, for Acts explains that they went to all these areas speaking the word to none except Jews. The mission of Philip in Samaria 
and the conversion of the Ethiopian eunuch are possibly the first indications of the church's willingness to receive non-Jews. But the issue is finally faced in Acts chapter 10 in the episode of Peter and Cornelius, which eventually leads the church of Jerusalem to the surprised conclusion. Then to the Gentiles also, I'm quoting, God has granted repentance unto life. Hallelujah and praise be to God for that. Immediately thereafter, we are told that something similar happened in Antioch, with the result that Barnabas was sent by the church in Jerusalem to investigate the matter. And when he came and saw the grace of God, he was glad. These various events show that according to uh, the book of Acts, while the earliest Christian expansion was mostly the result of the witness of those Jewish Christians of Hellenistic tendencies who had to flee Jerusalem, the mother church approved of their work both among Hellenistic Jews and among Gentiles. Naturally, this did not solve all problems, for there was always the question of whether Gentile converts to Christianity had to obey the law of Israel. After some hesitation, the church in Jerusalem accepted them declaring that it has seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no other burden than these necessary things, that thou abstain from what has been sacrificed to idols and from blood and from what is strangled and from fornication or unchastity, according to the book we're reading. Fornication is used in the King James. This, however, did not end the matter, for Paul's epistles are full of evidence that there were, for a time, those who insisted on greater strictures. Furthermore, one should note that most of these first Gentile converts were not completely alien to Judaism. They were what Jews often called God-fearers, people who had come to believe in the God and the ethical teachings of Israel, but for one reason or another had not joined the ranks of Israel by becoming proselytes. In the book of Acts, both the Ethiopian eunuch and Cornelius were such God-fearers, and in Antioch of Pisidia, Paul and Barnabas were enthusiastically received by the Jewish community until they proved to be too uh, ready to accept others who fear God into the ranks of the people of God. Now next time, beloved, we will look at Paul's work in mission to the Gentiles. Let's pray. Holy Father God, we thank you for this information. We thank you for this knowledge. We thank you, Lord, for the early church to lay the foundation, Lord, for where we are now. And Lord, uh, even though I do not believe we are nowhere near uh, what the early church was like, uh, we thank you for these faithful men and women who stood for you and who laid the foundation. Forgive us of our sins of not being like them. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Help us to repent of our sins and to be the Christians you want us to be. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Dear friend, please understand that simply knowing the facts about Christian history without knowing the one on whom this faith is based will do you no good. If you do not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, may I encourage you to get to know him today. He is the reason for the history of Christianity and yea, the history of the world. 
And he uttered these words for you. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Just believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and rose from the dead by the power of God for you, so that you can be a part of the church in this life and in the life to come. Pray and ask him to come into your heart today, and he will. He will save you. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Until next time, my beloved, please remember that history is truly his story. God bless you. Don't you know it's right?